amazing, is it not? The Ampelos, one of our newest subjects. So, how are we coming along? They are a product of Elpis, and so named for their birthplace. A happy accident, born of the hands of a former researcher who loved beautiful blossoms. Unique for how they change color, to reflect the emotional state of those nearby. Though be it here or elsewhere, they are seldom seen in any hue save purest white. Reflect the emotional state, you say? By what means do they achieve this? In creation, there exists an energy wholly apart from ether, one driven by emotions. In like manner to how we manipulate ether, this flower is subject to the influence of said energy. Well, it has no will of its own. It is sensitive to the prevailing emotion in the vicinity, and reacts by altering its color and vibrancy. Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feeling. Though I'm not familiar with the term, your description suggests it is the self-same energy. Dynamis, we call it. And those entities like the Elpis flower, that have the ability to interact with this energy, converting emotions into tangible phenomena, are Antelekis. That you are, my dear. And no ordinary one at that. But the first, possessed of free will. Wait. A form of energy other than ether? Dynamis? I've never heard of such a thing. Hardly surprising. Dynamis cannot be seen, much less felt. And though its existence has long been theorized, we had no proof until the flower's serendipitous creation. What's more, Dynamis is far weaker than ether. Under normal circumstances, its effects are drowned out by the latter. On account of which, beings comprised of and reliant upon the ether, like you and I, are unable to make practical use of Dynamis. Tis a truly esoteric thing, known to but a select few scholars. Intriguing. Then, given the limitations you described, why create Meteon? Our star. Etheris is especially rich in ether, so much so that its name is derived from it. However, when we consider all energy in existence here and in the vast space beyond, Dynamis may account for as much as 
0.3%. The more abundant form by far. Were we able to control it, we could open the door to limitless possibilities. Tis not unlike a gently flowing stream, unable to break through the dam of ether barring its path. But if we could imbue the stream with the vigor of a raging river, Not that I have such grand ambitions. Nay, I merely wish to create a being that could traverse the great expanse. The relative scarcity of ether beyond the bounds of this star was a concern. And so, I looked to another source of energy by necessity. That being Dynamis. No wonder her ether is so thin. Precisely. Yours is thin too. Like an entelechy. Like me. So... Are we the same? Entelechies. Well, aren't we ungrateful? Mayhap I should revert you to the pathetic, faded thing you were. A deficit of ether alone does not an Entelechy make. It would, however, make it easier for you to interact with Dynamis. And limited though its influence may be, this quality could prove the difference between victory and defeat. You'd do well not to underestimate it. Oh dear, I'd forgotten about the poor fellow. You must excuse me a moment while I go and verify a few more things.